Dudes, Joey Star here for an impromptu episode of Star Quality Kitchen. This is truly impromptu. I didn't even know until 20 minutes ago that I was going to film this episode. No outline, no script, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. What prompted me to film today was that, as you can see, I'm a little bit dressed up. I was just conducting some important business in Monticello, and I decided to drop in on a store that I've known has existed pretty much, I think, the whole time I've ever even lived in this area. They used to have a different name. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'm thinking something with the name Korea or Korean in it, like the Korean store. Or maybe I'm just remembering that all the local residents would refer to it as the Korean store. Same place, I believe the same owners, but it has a new name now. I think a few years ago, they changed the name to Monticello Green market. I've only once in my life set foot inside that store. Many years ago, I went in there to find a, some special ingredient probably close to 10 years ago that I'm thinking about it. They still have the old name at that point, I think. Like before, basically it's a Korean family owned grocery store. One of the things they're known for is for having specialty dietary items, lots of organic products that you may or may not find in your local store, or your local store may have organic this and that, but this place will have that organic this and that, and then they'll expand out and have these varieties as well. But they also proudly, and they should be proud, sport lots of Korean foods like Bibigo, and some of it, I believe, are imports from Korea, like some of the ramen. Let me tell you something, I'm a ramen eater. This store, I'm kicking myself in the ass for not walking in there again after all these years. But in my defense, the last time I was in there, I hadn't gotten into this kick with ramen and Asian foods. So I kind of didn't really realize the scope of what was going on in there. But kudos to them. They have all that stuff I just mentioned. They have a lot of specialty uh, drinks, including uh, imported drinks and even drinks that are in this country, but you'd only find it maybe in a larger supermarket where they have a specialized section. For example, uh, some probiotic soft drinks, that sort of thing. You know, you might go to your local store and they might have like one or two, but this place has like a, an assortment. They also have a lot of fresh produce, which I didn't buy any, but it looked really good. Bearing in mind, and you may already be thinking this, hey, if it's a specialty grocery store, it's probably gonna be a bit pricey. Yes, it is, but bless them. They have a great store, beautiful inside, clean, brightly lit, and this is one of the reasons why we're in the review world today. They also provide some authentic Korean dishes as hot meals that you can order right there, like kind of like a luncheonette. They're only open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I've read reviews on Yelp and Google. The majority of them are shining reviews, not just good reviews. Like, like people are just like, hey, this place is great. And one of the things they spoke about was the hot foods that they serve that they make up there for you. While I was waiting for my stuff to be made, I decided to do a little shopping in there, go, you know, pick up some items, and let me show you that first. I bought some wild tonic June kombucha, mango and ginger flavor. I expect this to be quite delicious. Non shim tempura udon. This is not a common flavor you find. I rarely see this, especially from a good name brand Korean ramen. If you've been watching my videos, then you already saw me have a review of some dumplings made by a company that I really enjoy called Bibigo. What's cool is they actually had a variety of products from Bibigo in this store, both frozen and non frozen. I was overwhelmed. I was in there, I was like, oh my god, I want to buy this whole store. From Bibigo, according to this, Korea's number one on soup stew brand. I got some kimchi stew with tofu. Again, BB go. Steamed soup dumplings. Let's read that again. Steamed soup dumplings. And not just steamed soup dumplings, but beef bulgogi flavor. Let me tell you something. There's not many opportunities in this area, at least, to get anything bulgogi. So whenever I see the opportunity, I seize that opportunity, that bulgogi. Boldak ramen. Again, I tried to go for something that looked like it wasn't the same flavor that I can get at Walmart or Sharp, right? Stir fried ramen, spicy chicken flavor. Of course. This one is not from BB Go. It's Korean barbecue style. I'm reading this as Guchujang pork belly. Marinated, it looks delicious. Next, from the same company, pork bulgogi. I know I'm pronouncing that one right. Again, I see bulgogi, I seize the opportunity, I buy it. Last but not least, this was a great surprise for me. Korean scallion pancakes. Freaking A, man. I've been wanting to try any kind of scallion pancake. I've been wanting to try it for a long time. And, speaking of those hot lunches, let me tell you something. 
Made an order there, I read the choices, saw what they had, I picked one, I'm gonna tell you what that is in a minute. This was made fresh, I had to wait like a good like eight minutes to get it. And the aroma from this thing, my God, it smells incredible. Longest car ride home ever. I literally salivated on the way back home. That's how great this smells. And, oh, they're generous with the napkins and the utensils. And they gave me some disposable chopsticks, which I definitely appreciate. And so what I ordered, big surprise here, ready? A bagogi box. Ha <laughs> ha A little different from a bento box, of course. It's not gonna have as many items, but you're gonna get a little bit more of what you're getting. Very simple. You got this amazing smell of bagogi. Wow. This is exactly what I was smelling in my car, but now that it's open, now we can zoom in on this. We'll, we'll take a closer look, but you can see the individual ingredients. You got the bagogi beef. You got some cold noodle in there, some carrots, some scallions, cop up. You can see the juice in there. This is very fresh. And of course, comes white rice. And you can see the individual grains. It's not this clumpy, nasty white rice. It's made nicely. So I really appreciate that. I know you're thinking now, okay, Joey bought a bunch of stuff. How much did he pay? I did buy a lot of stuff. And a lot of these items, they're high tag items. So in total, just a bit of a disclaimer. If you like this stuff and you walk in the store, pay attention to what you're buying because all this was about $97 and change. $97.12. So yeah, spent a little bit of money, but you know what? It's worth it because I'm gonna have a delicious lunch consisting of this bagogi box, and I'll wash it down with some kombucha. This other stuff is gonna be reviewed at another time, so totally worth the cost, don't you think? Just the BB Go items alone in this box was worth the trip to the store. All right, I put my stuff away. I'm ready to have some lunch. I'm really glad that I went into the store early like I did. Not because they were crazy busy, but if I had waited until, say, lunchtime to walk in there and had to wait this long to start eating, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm, I'm really hungry already. I'm going to take a swig of my kombucha. Oh, that's good. Good stuff, yeah. It's made with organic honey too, so that's how it's sweetened. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm telling you right now, if you're not familiar with kombucha, acquired taste, some of them are really sour, some of them are bitter. Not that they're bad, but that's the flavor profile. Some of them are a little bit sweeter. I appreciate that they took the time to include the honey in the recipe. Some of the kombucha that I buy more often, I find that I have to add a little bit of sweetener to there to make it a little more tolerable. This is not necessary. Yeah, we put a bottle as this. It's pretty good. And actually, I've had about three sips ready, maybe four. I'm finding that with each sip, I'm liking it a little bit more. So that's good. You see here, so we can get a good zoom in on this. There's the bagogi, there's the cold noodles. Any place worth their weight, they're gonna have the noodles on the bottom. So you kind of have to stir it up a bit. This is what I've learned watching YouTube videos. And a little bit of experience too. Sadly, my experience with Korean cuisine is not as, as extensive as I'd like it to be yet. But we'll get there. The biggest shame is that I didn't start getting into a lot of uh, authentic Asian foods until after I moved back to New York from the greater Seattle area. And it's a shame because out in the greater Seattle area, not only is there a lot more authentic Asian cuisine, but it's specialized. Like here in New York, especially away from the city, a lot of it is just general Chinese food, you know, which is like some of it in Szechuan, some of it in Cantonese, uh, a lot of it's just the Americanized version uh, that people think is Chinese food, it really isn't. <laughs> Chinese people won't even eat it because they know better. Seattle, not only do you have more authentic Asian cuisine, but they're specialized. One place is Vietnamese, another place is Korean barbecue, another one's other kind of Korean store, all sorts of stuff. You got places that specialize in Thai. It's a whole different experience. You're gonna get more authentic stuff in most places in the Seattle area because a lot of the people who come from those cultures reside there, and some of them were gracious enough to open up authentic restaurants for us. If I knew then what I know now, about Asian culture, you better believe. I probably wouldn't even be able to go to a regular Chinese restaurant in this area again. So I'm mixing this up, let me see the rice here. Again, you can see the individual grains and a little bit clumpy, but that's okay, it's no problem. I mean, they served this to me like half an hour ago, so I can't fault them for what rice does when it cools down, right? But let's try some of the rice by itself. All right, I mean, it's fragrant, definitely fresh. Yeah, it's very fresh, cleanly made. Not much flavor because it's not meant to be eaten this way, it's meant to be 
mixed with the other foods. That's fine. But I'll tell you what, even eating it by itself like this, it's not bad. It's not bad. I do detect a little bit of something here. Let me see. This might actually be jasmine rice. Yeah, that's what it's reminding me of. A little bit of that jasmine kind of fragrance and taste to it. A little, uh, I've heard people use the term nuttier <laughs> to describe rice like this. I don't know if I agree with that term, but for those who use that term, this is what you're talking about. All right, let's try some of the bulgogi, just the beef by itself. I mean, this is the star attraction right here. Mmm. Mmm. Cooked perfectly, you know, medium well, tender, just chewy enough like you expect from bulgogi. I can taste that uh, the sauce that it's made in is soy sauce based, which is fine. That's what I wanted. Let's get to some of these noodles. All right, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Look at these. You got the, I always say that uh, these type of noodles, typically used for cold noodles, kind of remind me of like <laughs> jellyfish tentacles, only in that they're somewhat transparent. I mean, I'd much rather eat this than a jellyfish. Even just the way it jiggles, I can just kind of tell that this it's cooked to a nice, al dente texture. All right, let's try it out. Mm. Good, got some decent bounce to it. Try some of it together with the bogey and noodle together. Okay, let's see a bite. Mm. Good. Yeah, I tell you, I know a lot of people who eat something like this, and no matter what, they drop some hot sauce in here. This flavor profile is really good. It's not over salty. Uh, nice savory flavor. What I smell, there's some onion in here. In addition to the scallion, you get some of the white area of the scallion too. That was obviously cooked in here. You taste that in there. The carrot, not overly cooked either. A little extra crunch and adds a little sweetness to the flavor profile. Very much appreciating that. It's so tasty, I just want to take this and drop it into my mouth now. But the truth of the matter is, I really should try it with some of the rice. After all, this is a review. There we go. Okay. Wasn't the most plentiful bite I could have put there. But here we go. So, some of the noodle. There's a little bit of a gogi right in there. Nice chunk of rice. Put it all together. Yeah. This is jasmine rice. And you know what? Jasmine rice pairs terrifically with bulgogi, no doubt about it. This is just nice compliment, cuts into the soy sauce a bit. It's just salty enough that you can taste that it's there. I really appreciate that. You know how many times I've had similar meals, although they weren't made fresh like this, but I've had similar meals in restaurants and it's like they're trying to raise your blood pressure. I don't know. I mean, I realized that a lot of that, especially when I was a kid, a lot of that stuff was extra salty because they're using MSG in there and they're not using MSG here. Very tasty, not overpowering with the savory aspect, really fragrant. Everything's fresh. You taste it, you smell it, you feel it when you're chewing in it. You can feel and taste and smell the individual ingredients, but they also had their own identity in unison when tasting them. <laughs> I can talk some real trash, can't I? I suppose that's better than eating it. A little Seinfeld humor there. Mmm. I gotta tell you, this is good. This is good. One more thing I want to try is, I'm just going to kind of park some of this to the side here so that I can access the juices inside. You probably can't see this on camera here. And I want to dump some of the rice right into the juices there. So this way the rice soaks it up because I want to try the rice with the bulgogi sauce soaked up into it. There we go. Mmm. Yes. Yes. Mmm. Hell to the yeah. One of the great things of trying stuff like this, with my Mediterranean background and upbringing, we love rice and we love having the meat juices in our rice, or as we uh, refer to it as caldu. We love to having the caldu in our rice. I don't know what they call it in Korean, caldu, if you have a special word for it or not. Whatever it is, your, whatever that word is, your version of that, delicious. It goes well with your rice. Thank you. Another bite. Mmm. This is so good. I'm going to wrap this up here because honestly, this is so good that I need time alone with it. No offense. You're my friends and all, but <laughs> some things you just don't need prying eyes on. All right. So once again, Monticello Green Market, 
It's on Route 42, Monticello. I'll drop the address down there in the description box. And that's really it. As far as I'm concerned, if it's around lunchtime, you're near this place, you like good, authentic Korean food, made fresh, hot, you like bulgogi, go check it out because I think the next closest place you're going to get some decent bulgogi is probably in the next county over in Millstown. Anyway, that's it for this. Thank you so much for watching Star Quality Kitchen. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and stalk. Later. Yum. Any excuse to eat good food is not an excuse, it's a mission.